Hello, um, this is Everett, and I'm at the beginning of a new series on uh, wiring and ballasting track. I actually wanted to uh, do a series on ballasting track first, and then I realized, well, I need to do things in the uh, proper sequence uh, because it's a lot harder to wire track uh, when you got ballast in the way. So. Uh, we're going to start with uh, some wiring first. This is the section here that I'm actually going to work on uh, getting ballasted. Um, if you remember from the last uh, hand laid turnout series, I put this turnout in and uh, just added this one here. I've uh, been spending the last uh, few weeks off and on rebuilding this interchange here, shifting these shifting these turnouts back a few inches on either end because uh, when I uh, lifted the plan off an HO plan and converted to N scale I kind of screwed up in my calculations made it a little too short so uh, this is kind of uh, piecemeal chopped together but I think uh, I'm at the point where uh, where you start putting down some ballast I had some requests from users uh, for ballasting and wiring so this is what it's all about uh, so, um, the first part I'll start talking about your supplies and you'll need, then actually get into wiring. So, um, hang on there, we'll have some fun. Alrighty, uh, let's get on to materials. First, uh, you're going to need some wiring for your main bus. I run uh, DCC using Easy DCC and you need to use a heavier uh, gauge wiring uh, because you're going to be running the bus or so the main feed line all the way around uh, the perimeter of your layout and uh, you need something a uh, fairly heavy gauge because you're going to be running some fairly long lengths away from your booster so you don't want uh, and if you if your wire is too narrow you have a uh, resistance and you'll have a voltage drop so this is a uh, 14 gauge wiring actually had a hole ton of wiring left over from uh, when I rewired the house so I think the standard recommendation is uh, either 12 or 14 gauge I suppose if you have a really big layout uh, um, you know, 12 gauge would uh, work better and uh, you don't have to use house wiring you can buy spools of this stuff at your uh, local uh, home depot or Menards or Lowe's or whatever you have uh, in your locale so um, you need something for your main bus and you'll need feeder wires uh, to run from the bus to the actual track itself. Now this is, uh, I use something, um, I use heavier gauge wire. I think the standard is either 20 or 22 gauge, very thin wires. You run short thin wires from your track to the main bus. Again, um, you want to keep the length short if you have a very... Um, thin fine gauge because you don't want to get a voltage drop because you're running um, too long a wire. So um, I've got kind of uh, cramped situations um, in my layout so I like to run heavier wire. Um, this is actually stranded, yeah, stranded 18 gauge wire. Uh, run heavier wire from the bus to my track. Uh, so Okay, okay, and I use stranded wire for a specific reason. You'll see later uh, in this series why I use it. Uh, it'll be a lot more clear to you. So, uh, depending on how you're doing it, uh, you know, you may want to run, use the finer wire and uh, run shorter lengths of that and run them to the bus, but I'm just using longer lengths in my situation. Your mileage may vary. Um, I tend to do things a little different sometimes, so uh, you can take my techniques and use whatever, apply whatever you find useful. So, a little utility knife um, for cutting insulation off uh, and uh, for uh, cutting the solder. I, I use the little disc method that I use for uh, uh, my uh, N gauge turnouts, so you'll see how I do that. Okay, rosin core solder. All right, you'll need that. A um, little utility knife. Electrician's tape um, uh, for taping any exposed wire that you may have, uh, especially when running uh, feeders off the bus. You want to just kind of tape those up. Um, wire cutter, like that. Some a wire stripper, 
uh, for stripping the insulation off. It's also a cutter too, but uh, this one's kind of beat up. I've abused it uh, from cutting so much wire uh, from rewiring my house, but uh, you need to strip or you can get this from your um, hardware store, like I say, Home Depot, Lowe's, and uh, for real cheap. And a pair of needle nose pliers, that comes in handy too um, for pulling wire or holding on to wire while you're soldering it. And of course, you're going to need a soldering iron. Oops, let me get you a bird's eye view of this. Got this 25 watt Weller uh, soldering iron. Um, does the job nice. And you'll need something to hold your soldering iron. Um, this is admittedly a monster. Uh, the story behind this is that uh, I had a brick, I had a coat hanger, and I was feeling irrationally cheap. So, I uh, put this beast together, but you can buy uh, nice little soldering um, iron stands at uh, local hardware or home supply um, store, so uh, you don't have to do this. But you need something to hold it because you don't want this thing resting on bare wood and rolling around or anything like that. So, a couple more items that you'll need that I completely forgot to mention, and I usually do that. Uh... Drill bit for drilling through the sub um, road bed um, for the plywood. And here I've got a 5 uh, 32nd inch drill bit, uh, a little slightly over a uh, 16th of an inch. Uh, so um, the uh, 18 gauge wire will fit through uh, without any problems. And of course, I got my Dremel Moto tool uh, for doing that. Put the drill bit in there and uh, drill a hole. Another thing you'll need. It's so a terminal strip, and uh, it'll become clear what I do with these as we progress in um, this wiring tutorial.